Hi, my name is James Kim, and today I'm going to be doing my tech talk on scroll magic. Um, that was just like one example. Um, so a little bit about scroll magic. It's a lightweight JavaScript library that's used for not only creating, but also organizing animations based on a user's scroll position. Um, the credit for this library goes to a designer in Chicago named John Polacek, and it serves as a rework of his first project, which he called Super Scrollorama. Um, just to kind of start the presentation, I wanted to showcase um, a parallax section that I made using scroll magic and one other dependency that I found. Um, I don't know if scroll magic ha uh, parallax has fallen out of favor within the de design community, but um, I did find that using scroll magic took a lot of the, uh, the headache and guesswork with um, doing the fading along with the um, image management with the parallax section. So, um, and also the text I got from uh, hipster ipsum, if that's something you're interested in, in using. So uh, when I was first learning about scroll magic, I really appreciated the documentation that it included. And I feel like um, there's so many resources to learn about different scroll magic techniques because the documentation is so thorough. Um, and one thing that I especially liked was that it comes with a debugging tool called indicators so that you can see exactly on a page um, when an animation is going to trigger and also for how long it's going to run. Uh, and I have a link here that shows a few of the examples that are showcased on the Scroll Magic website. And it's really accessible because um, they have very basic techniques for people who are just starting with animations. Um, but at the same time, they also allow for really effective implementations of scroll animations for people who are more familiar and more comfortable. So if we go into an advanced technique, we can see that um, with scroll magic, you can very easily um, animate different SVGs and control them using an animation scrolling. Um, and also, as I mentioned before, the indicators are shown on the right of the screen with a start and end tick. And that takes a lot of the guesswork behind knowing when and for how long different animations are going to run. Hopefully one day, as I get more comfortable with scroll magic, I'll be able to do things that incorporate the Bezier path. Um, so if you see here, they take a paper airplane and they make it go through some uh, curves. And they're uh, managing this animation with the user scrolling. So in order to use scroll magic, there are really two things to keep in mind. First, you have to instantiate a controller. And that's going to be the brains behind the operation. You really have only one controller for one project. And all you're going to be doing is um, creating new instances of scenes and passing them into the controller. Um, and as long as you stick with that pattern, um, you'll be able to uh, manage and also incorporate multiple animations within one project. And with the scene, it's pretty uh, easy to start from the bottom and work up. So you have to make sure that at the end of every scene, you have to add it to the controller. And then here we have set pin. This is one of many methods that are in, uh, included in the scroll magic docs. And it just shows you what element you're going to be grabbing. And you're going to be pinning it. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like in, um, in the later part of the website. Um, and finally, we have a lot of the options that you can incorporate so that you know exactly when a trigger is going to start and for how long an animation is going to run. And one thing for people who are getting more and more comfortable with scroll magic, you can use um, a variety of dependencies. But what's so great is that these are all completely optional. So if you just want to learn scroll magic, you can do just that. But if you want to get more advanced uh, animations that involve tweening, then you're more than welcome to incorporate something like um, a very popular animation platform known as Greensock. And that's what I used in um, creating my tech talk. So earlier, I was talking about um, pinning elements. And I found that when you use scroll magic to pin elements, it's really easy for creating transitions across different slides. And it has a pretty um, nice like narrative effect for telling a story and offering transitions. Um, so yeah. 
And finally, one thing that I learned was that with scroll magic, you can take a sprite and animate it so that as you scroll, it's sort of like animating a GIF. And yeah. And that was my tech talk. Thanks. <laughs>